Get ready for the morning rush. We'll start with Kristen Curry. Good morning. More storms and showers expected to fill in out over the eastern side of the state through the later part of this morning, getting closer to the metro area late morning and continues to do so as we get into the later part of this afternoon. Some of these storms could be on the strong to potentially severe side. We'll continue late tonight. We clear out overnight and start this process all over again for the eastern portion of New Mexico tomorrow. Adam, as you get ready to head out the door, we're following the day's top local stories. We'll start with Catherine Mazzone. Hours from now, the state Supreme Court is said to hear arguments over holding a defendant without bond. The woman charged with killing a mother and her daughter filed the appeal after a district court judge denied her bail. It's allowed thanks to a new constitutional amendment, but defense attorneys argue the court's reasoning was unjust. They say the court, or the judge rather, didn't grant no bond based off of the new amendment. Instead, he ruled it's her responsibility to prove why she should get bail because she was indicted on a capital felony. That hearing is today at 9 in Santa Fe. On to news news this morning, the FBI has now doubled its reward for information leading to the arrest of Joseph Jakubowski, the man who wrote a 161-page anti-government manifesto to the White House. He's accused of breaking into a gun store and stealing several weapons. Police believe he does have plans to attack public officials, schools, and churches right now. A nationwide manhunt remains in place. On to other news happening today, the city's personnel board is expected to continue its discussion on whether a former APD officer can have his job back. This comes after the board voted to give Jeremy Deer his job back with suspension over a year. The city's now finding that APD fired Deer in 2014 for repeatedly failing to turn on his body cam during use of force encounters. As you wake up today, a couple that state police say has been terrorizing Taos is still on the run. 21-year-old Martin Rivera is believed to have carjacked an elderly man yesterday from the Ranchos de Taos post office. Police believe that Rivera is with 16-year-old Joanne Montoya. The pair is also, a, they're also suspects in a stabbing last week in the Smith's parking lot, as well as an armed robbery yesterday at Walmart. This morning, the city of Albuquerque finds itself in the crosshairs of a lawsuit after an Air Force veteran says he was arrested for a crime he did not commit. According to the lawsuit against APD Detective Eric Kohola and the city, the police thought John Ganley was this man, a cash-checking thief who gave police a driver's license that matched Ganley's. For more information on this story, go to our KR2 News app. On to this news, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer apologizing this morning after comparing the Syrian regime to the Holocaust and Hitler. Spicer mistakenly said that Hitler did not use chemical weapons on his own people, overlooking millions who died in the Nazis' gas chambers. Spicer later said that his remark was inappropriate and insensitive. On to new news this morning, the Washington Post reports the FBI did receive a secret court order to monitor the communications of Trump advisor Carter Page in a probe of the campaign's ties to Russia. The paper reports the FBI believed Page was acting as a Russian agent. Page denies having any improper ties to Russia. Top ranking members of the state Senate Commerce Committee, I should say the Senate Commerce Committee from both parties are demanding answers after video of a passenger being dragged off a United Airlines flight surfaced. Four passengers were ordered off the plane to make room for four employees to travel instead. Dr. David Dow refused and unarmed airport police officers pulled him off the plane. The airline CEO is promising a review now of his company's policies. We're learning new details about an officer involved shooting near Gallup this week. State police, last week rather, state police now say after pulling over Stephen Thompson on I-40 Friday, he tried to get away, but when Thompson jumped back in the car, so did the officer. Investigators say Thompson took off down the interstate while a woman in the back seat attacked the officer. That's when the officer shot Thompson in the stomach. He did survive. It was later discovered that there was 50 pounds of pot in that car. APD is actively investigating the death of a man who's found at a hotel. Officers were called to a shooting at the Motel 76 on Candelaria near I-25 yesterday morning where they found that man dead. Police say they're still investigating whether the man was shot and if that's what caused his death. The victim's name's not been released and no suspects have been named. On to new news this morning. A new poll shows Governor Susana Martinez's approval rating is dropping. The Santa Fe New Mexican reports that a survey from Morning Consult found 48% of registered New Mexico voters polled that they disapproved of the job she's doing. According to the New Mexican, the governor's spokesman did not respond to a request for comment on the poll. Also new this morning, leading New Mexico lawmakers will gather tomorrow to weigh the consequences of the governor's veto of funding for the legislative branch for the upcoming fiscal year. The legislative council that oversees state house business in between legislative sessions will consider how to respond moving forward. Martinez says that she will call a special session soon. Sarah.
Marketing students at UNM are hoping to bring awareness to an industry that some may not consider as a career with an ad campaign they've created themselves. Through videos, memes, GIFs, they're hoping to get students ages 16 to 22 interested in the oil and gas industry. It's part of the Fuel Your Career National Recruitment Challenge, sponsored by the American Fuel and Petrochemical Manufacturers. The top team will be awarded $5,000 in scholarships. To see their campaign, visit krqe.com. Kristen? Metro threat index today up to a six. We do have the potential to see a spot storm make it into the Rio Grande Valley. Late morning breezy conditions moving in for the later part of the afternoon, about 15 to 25 miles per hour. Temperatures pretty comfortable back into the mid to upper 70s. Adam. One group calling for state leaders to help improve air quality after releasing a report. The Environment New Mexico Research and Policy Center showed just how many days several cities in each state had elevated smog pollution in 2015. Albuquerque ranked 22nd in the nation for days with elevated smog. This morning, a new study shows that hot flashes in younger midlife women could signal vascular dysfunction that leads to heart disease. The online journal Menopause looked at women 40 to 60 years old and found that the effect of Hot flashes on the ability of blood vessels to dilate was found only in the younger third of the group. Kristen. Time now for a check on your uh, morning commute. There's no significant accidents out there. We look to be pretty good on I-25. Just a little sluggish I-40 eastbound right as he hit the big eye. Media companies are sitting down at the negotiating table with Hollywood screenwriters this week. The Writers Guild of America warned that if the talks fail, its members may go on strike next month as they did back in 2007. Both sides are hoping to avoid a repeat of the 100-day work stoppage. It costs the entertainment industry more than $2 billion. Instagram users listen up. The company's newest feature may look pretty familiar to people who use Snapchat. Instagram users can now send direct messages that disappear after a short period of time. And just as news of the update hit, shares of Snapchat fell. Huh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, time now for the five facts. So at number five, as the weather gets warmer, animal welfare is warning you that if you leave your pet in a hot car, you will get a ticket. The department says it's getting more than a dozen calls a day about people leaving animals inside cars, even in 70-degree weather. Two owners were recently ticketed after animal welfare says their animals had to be rescued this weekend. All right, number four, in the coming weeks, Santa Fe Public Schools could decide to close two elementary schools because of the state's budget crisis. The district says it is in the process of building its budget for the next fiscal year, and that is forcing it to consider these closures. According to the president of EJ Martinez Elementary's PTA, that's what was sent in this letter to parents of students at EJ Martinez and Nava Elementary Schools on Monday. If the district does close the two schools, students would attend neighboring schools. On to number three now, UNM's new head coach is likely hitting the ground running this morning. Today, players can begin signing their national intent, national letter rather, of intent for college basketball. After 10 seasons at New Mexico State and one as head coach, Paul Weir will become the first to coach both of the state's Division I basketball programs. Weir says one of his goals is to fill the pit for games. He signed a six-year deal with UNM just yesterday. At number two, scattered to widespread showers and thunderstorms likely over central and eastern New Mexico through the day today. Some of these storms have the potential to turn severe over the southeast. Threats will be large hail, damaging winds, can't even rule out an isolated tornado. Quiet conditions over the far northwest and west central areas. Temperatures warm across the state. On to number one, today the state Supreme Court set to hear an appeal from a suspect in a deadly stolen car crash. Alexis Grove's attorneys want a district court judge's decision to keep her in jail on a no bond hold reversed. Investigators say 21 year old Alexis Groves, 24 year old Paul Garcia stole a van while it was warming up, then ran from police in January. They allegedly crashed into a car at the intersection of Copper and Chelwood, killing Shauna and Shaylee Bowling. That hearing is scheduled for 9 a.m. this morning. We'll keep you posted on what happens both on air and on the news app.